Hi everyone, so I'm going to continue now to talk about the photoelectric effect. So in the previous video I mentioned this um, the experiment and I show you the uh, examples that when you're using different colors light, which remember corresponds to different wavelengths of the light, uh, sometimes you get electrons that come off the surface of the metal and sometimes you don't. So the question then is, you know, how do you explain this? So this is some of the um, observations of the photoelectric effect. Uh, based on the experiment that you saw in the previous video. Uh, and then the classical mechanical uh, prediction of what's going to happen. So this is, uh, the, the way this is presented is very similar to when we were discussing black body radiation, which is that there is um, the classical prediction of how things are supposed to work and then what was actually observed. And then the classical mechanical prediction was completely uh, off, right? It's, it didn't predict what was ob actually observed. So that's why we need a new theory to help explain the behavior, the phenomenon, OK? So um, in this particular case, we're going to just talk about uh, the different observations, OK? The first one, of course, is this, this observation that I hope you, you get from watching that movie early in the previous video, which is that the uh, incoming light's frequency is very important in determining whether an electron will come off the surface of the metal or not. So I'm not talking about the actual kinetic energy of the electron, right? Earlier we were measuring this based on this current meter, the amp meter. And the amp meter shows basically the kinetic energy of the electron. But here I'm just talking about the fact that, you know, will an electron come off the surface of the metal or not? And it, it turns out that as you as you saw in that video when we use red light um, we don't see any electrons coming off but when we use yellow green and blue we see electrons coming off with different amounts of kinetic energy but the main concept there is to say that well when we use red no electrons but when we use yellow or or, or you know higher frequency uh, light then we see a um, electrons being ejected off the surface of the metal, being uh, uh, kicked out the surface of the metal. So in other words, the conclusion there is that there's some kind of a threshold frequency. There's some kind of a, of a frequency that's needed in order for the electrons to be kicked out from the surface of the metal. And so that uh, frequency is called the threshold frequency. It's given the symbol nu not nu remember is the symbol for frequency not just means uh, you know is usually a symbol for initial but in this case is is used to denote this uh, threshold frequency uh, quantity okay now uh, we'll see later on that the value of nu not the value of this threshold frequency depends on the type of metal you use so for example if you're using sodium uh, maybe a, a certain type of light will be able to get uh, the metal of sodium, but a different type of light would be needed if you're talking about potassium. Okay, so this new not value is not the same for all metals. It depends on the type of metal that you use. Um, I just want to mention here in, in red, I provided the classical mechanical prediction of what uh, should happen between the quantities. And in this case, according to classical mechanics, there's actually no relationship between frequency and energy. So this result was not even uh, predictable using classical mechanics because there was no equation in classical mechanics that relates frequency and energy, okay? And I want to kind of go back and forth between this slide and the next slide, which is a slide that kind of shows the behavior of the, uh, in, in plots, the behavior of the uh, photoelectric effect experiment and then the classical mechanical prediction, okay? So the idea of the threshold frequency is illustrated by this plot here. So if you think about the uh, plotting the kinetic energy of the electron that's being kicked out from the surface of the metal uh, versus the frequency of light uh, that's hitting the surface of the metal, you notice that there's a certain, uh, basically when, we, when we're starting here from zero uh, up to a certain level, no electron is ejected, right? So, you know, when you use red light earlier, as you can, you can see in that previous video, when you use red light, there's no electron that's being ejected. So if I use a light that's longer than red light, for example, infrared, I wouldn't see any electron being ejected either. If I use radio wave, I wouldn't see any electron being ejected either. So that's the, that's the flat line right here. Now, at a certain point, when I change to yellow, electron starts to get ejected off, 
when I go to uh, green, electrons get ejected off, uh, you know, electrons get ejected off with a higher kinetic energy. So that's why the plot goes like that. And then when I use blue, it gets ejected with even more kinetic energy. And you assume that if I will go with ultraviolet or x-ray, the electron will get ejected even more, okay? So that's why there's this this uh, straight line here that corresponds to there's a certain frequency beyond that frequency anything higher than frequent that frequency basically will just translate to a higher amount of kinetic energy for the electron that's being uh, kicked out from the surface of the metal as I said earlier with classical mechanics there's no relationship so kinetic energy is supposed to be constant as a function of frequency uh, there isn't any linear uh, relationship here like the one that we actually observe from the experiment. Let's go to observation number two. Uh, if you actually have a light whose frequency is higher than your threshold frequency, than your new knot, okay, um, what we find is that if we were to crank up the, num the frequency, let's say again we're going from you know, uh, yellow to green to blue, what we see is that we don't see more electrons coming out from the surface of the metal. Okay, so this is an important idea. So if you look back at this picture again, let's say I, you know, I have, um, you know, my threshold frequency, let's say, corresponds to color yellow. So anything with yellow or higher frequency will give me electrons, right? So if I shot this surface of the metal with yellow, I get uh, one electron out. Now, if I shot this off with uh, green, which is higher frequency than yellow, by classical mechanical prediction, in theory, you should actually see more electrons uh, coming off the surface. So in other words, if I, use, uh, if I use yellow, I should, let's say, maybe see one electron. If I use green, maybe I see like five electrons. If I use blue, maybe I see 10 electrons. But the actual experimental observation is that whether you use yellow, green, or blue, you still only get one electron, okay? So the number of electrons that's being ejected has no relationship with the frequency of the light that's hitting it. However, the number of electrons that's being ejected is correlated to the intensity of the light. In other words, it's not correlated to the wavelength, but it's correlated to the intensity. Remember, intensity is the brightness of the light. So the brighter the light, the more electrons get uh, ejected off the surface of the metal. So in other words, if I were to use yellow light, yellow light is able to eject an electron off, right? If I use a brighter yellow light, a more intense yellow light, I will get more electrons ejected off, okay? Uh, so again, it's not about changing the color of the light, but it's about changing the brightness of the light. That's what's observed. So intensity is correlated to number of ejected electrons, uh, which is again different than the classical prediction. Okay, so I'm going to show that in the middle plot right here. Uh, what we uh, observe again is, is uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to show it in this plot right here. W what we observe is the following. We observe that intensity has, uh, has a linear relationship with the number of electrons that's being ejected. Uh, the classical prediction says that intensity has nothing to do with, um, with number of electrons that's being ejected. Okay, let's go to the third observation. The third observation is that, with, that's the observation that the kinetic energy has uh, is proportional to frequency. You remember that in, in the video, you noticed that when we were using red light, nothing comes out, but when we use yellow, green, and blue, the current progressively go higher and higher, and that corresponds to the kinetic energy. So in other words, if you change wavelength or change frequency, you get uh, more kinetic energy to the electron, okay? So that's what was observed in classical mechanics there's no relationship between frequency uh, and energy okay so you you don't actually expect anything to happen between frequency and energy that's the same like number one right in number one also it says the same thing in classical mechanics no relation between frequency and energy so the last uh, observation is the observation that the um, intensity of the light has nothing to do with the kinetic energy of the eject, ejected electron. So what's that mean? Remember again, I, I want to use this example again. If you use yellow light, remember that if you use yellow light, uh, you can get electrons off. And then if you use frequency higher than yellow, which is green and blue, I get more. I, I get uh, electrons ejected with uh, more kinetic energy. 
but if I use red light, remember with red light, I don't see any electrons coming off. Remember that amp meter, that current meter is zero. So when I use red light, I don't see any electrons coming off. If I were to use brighter red light, a more intense red light, there's still no electron will be ejected off. So in other words, what that's saying is that the, the electron, the condition that the electron is ejected depends on frequency, not intensity, okay? And that's completely different than what's predicted by classical mechanics. In classical mechanics, you actually predict a, a dependence of kinetic energy as a function of intensity. So in other words, if you crank up the intensity or the brightness of the light, you expect more uh, the electron to have more kinetic energy. But in this case, we actually don't observe that. Okay, So that's the plot that's shown in the middle right here. And um, classical mechanics, we predict that if I were to crank up the intensity, the kinetic energy of the electron should have gone up by quite a bit more. Okay, So in other words, if I were to use red light, I should be able to get off the electron off the surface of the metal at some point if I make the light bright enough. But what was actually observed was that regardless of what intensity I make the uh, red light to be, I still don't see electron being ejected because the kinetic energy basically has no relationship uh, uh, with or no dependent, dependence on intensity. Okay, so this is the, uh, the actual observations again, and this is the um, prediction from classical mechanics. And as you can see, you know, just kind of roughly looking at these three plots right here, uh, they don't, you know, they completely are, are, are completely not uh, uh, the same uh, with each other. So the theory is completely uh, mispredicting what's happening in actual experiment. So what we're going to do in the next video is kind of explain what Einstein thought was going on with the photoelectric effect. And, uh, you know, kind of basically look at light in, in a completely different way than how people have been used to, to you know, modeling light before uh, he came up with his idea.